Hi there everyone, my name is Rena Hicks and it is International Women's Day, which is March 8th. And really it's not just about March 8th, it's the whole year where we're celebrating amazing women who've done such great things in the different facets of life, whether it's culture, politics, business, entrepreneurship, we are going to be looking at those different women. But the first one I want to look at, and might be the only one because she's just amazing, is actually, in my view, the most influential woman on this continent and is managing a company that has profits well over three, 30, 30 billion shillings. You heard me right. And I'm so thrilled to be able to introduce you to her. Some of you may not know who she is, but her name is Sylvia Mulinke. I'm so happy to have you. Oh my God, I feel like I want to go through the floor with that <laughs> introduction. But it is the truth. <laughs> It is the truth. Welcome. You're very kind. Thank you very much. And it is such a pleasure to have you. You silently, you know those stealth mode type of people. That's, yes. that's who you are in my view. Oh, like really? You do amazing things, but you're not announcing it, which is awesome. <laughs> I've forced her to come onto the show. Yes, you have. I'm here reluctantly. Reluctantly, <laughs> but I'm so thankful. Thank you. Um, I want us to get into it. So the first question I have is who is Sylvia? Where did Sylvia grow up? And let's talk about your family of origin. Okay. Yeah. So, as you've rightly introduced me, my name is Sylvia Mlinge. I am a firstborn, which I think is a good thing, but sometimes my siblings tell me it's not such a great thing. Um, but anyway, uh, born in Nairobi, brought up in Nakuru. Uh, my dad is retired as well as my mom. My mom worked in a bank. My dad was a, an engineer and uh, went to school in Nakuru. Uh, went to high school in a school called Marymount, which is in Molo. Um, and then after that came to the big city, uh, studied food science and technology, which I graduated with honors. I'm really, I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, it's probably the only other honors degree I have in my life. And then um, came, to, started hustling, uh, looking for a job. Uh, my first real job was in Unilever where I was recruited as a management trainee. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, grew my career as a, marketing and a salesperson in the commercial space and later then moved on to Safaricom where I have been for the last uh, 14 years. Oh, it's been 14 years. It's been 14 years so <coughs> far. Um, but I am energetic, I'm passionate, I love God. I'm a mother of two, two wonderful children that I love with my heart, all my heart. How old are they? Uh, Jason is 13, Jasmine is 10, going on 55, well, <laughs> 25 maybe. Um, and um, I'm, I also love everything that has to do with uh, leadership, entrepreneurship, as well as uh, women. And those are the areas that I'm really passionate okay. about. Were any of your parents entrepreneurs? No, actually. Um, my desire for or passion for entrepreneurship actually burst out of a conversation that I had with my, uh, with my, my boss and my friend, uh, the late Bob Collimo. Uh, when you were having a conversation around um, how can we create impact and just the power of entrepreneurship to be able to transform societies and around just business as a powerful agent to be able to change world and uh, drive positive outcomes in society. So started thinking a lot about that, but also I guess the commercial streak in me lends itself easily to the area of entrepreneurship. So. Mm -hmm. I, I, am a, I am an avid entrepreneur. I'm not sure I'm successful yet, but still on that journey That's and amazing. enjoying it. That's amazing. So you are, the, your title at Safaricom is Chief Commercial? Chief, Chief Customer, Customer Officer. Customer. Chief customer officer. officer. So it's a commercial role, but we rebranded it because it's all about customers. At the end of the day, what we say, the only person who brings money into the ecosystem is a customer. So they're the most important person. And therefore, by using that title, it reminds us every day that we are a customer organization and that's what we should be focusing mm, on. I see. So if you look back, um, maybe f to what people said when you were younger, is there anything that came about in your childhood, either just the way that you behaved that you can sort of point back towards um, and look at and say, yeah, I can see how I got here. Or um, perhaps I can rephrase that to ask, are there things that happened in your childhood that were clear to you and others around you that you'll be a success? You know, there are guys who say, I'll be president of Kenya yeah. and they become president. <laughs> yeah, was there anything like that in your... No, well, I think, first of all, my, just the inspiration that I got from my parents, being a firstborn, um, and just my dad always wanted me he, to be 
the best version of me. And he really sacrificed a lot. Um, and I think the best that he could do, because I come from a simple uh, background, um, and therefore my dad really saved to like take me to the best schools, or at least what, I worked hard in school and then he worked hard to pay the fees. And he always encouraged me to just pursue a hard work ethic and be excellent in everything that I did. So I was always like <clears throat> stretching myself, going beyond. So I was in debate, I was in drama. I ended up being a prefect, I ended up being a head girl. So I don't know if that points to anything in the future, but I was always kind of pushing myself and going the extra mile just to make sure. Uh, first of all, starting off by saying that I didn't want to disappoint my dad. Uh, but then over and above that, um, just pushing myself to excel because I wanted to create that best version of me. And I guess that has always been my life motto. I don't think I ever like had a big vision. I, I guess the grandest vision I had at that time was I wanted to be an air hostess because everyone was traveling around the world. Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, air hostess travel around the world. So I wanted to see the world. Um, but I mean, I kind of, one of my life mottos is I leave my life forwards and I understand it backward. And therefore, every space I find myself, I just try to be the best version of me at that particular time. And then ultimately, you just find yourself moving forward and then the dots connect and suddenly you've moved from A to B and it becomes a life of impact. So you made a statement that I don't want to just gloss over because okay. I think it's quite deep. You said, I live my life forwards, but understand it backwards. Could mm. you just... And you said that that's one of the things that you live by. Maybe you can just explain what you okay, mean Okay, so first of all, it's not an original comment. So it's, I think I had it when, um, in a commencement address that was given by Steve Jobs when he was talking about his life mm -hmm. and just how all the different parts at particular moments, when you look at them in isolation, they were not making sense, but ultimately they all add up to the big picture. So for me, I think one of the things that really challenges as humans, especially, uh, let me just speak about myself, is I always like to know the the end of something. I'm kind of a big picture thinker. Um, and I follow the detail, but I like to know what is the final outcome. And inevitably, sometimes what happens is that um, when you try to kind of predict everything, you also lose the joy of dancing in the moment. And therefore, I, I kind of change my view of life. And I said, ultimately, uh, because I'm also a person of faith, I know that um, my life is going to be this one great canvas, but I may not see the whole picture in its entirety, and therefore what do I do with the one dot that is in front of me? Um, that dot, whether it's my role as a mother, my role in community, my role in, uh, in the workplace, or my role in terms of interacting with people, what do I do with that particular dot? Because that ultimately then leads to another dot and another dot. And then what you then find is that the, all the dots at some point then connect together, and then you find that you have kind of, uh, uh, translated yourself from one point to the next. So that's kind of then how I live my life. It also makes it easier mm -hmm. in terms of uh, handling sometimes life challenges when they come because life is made up of mountains and valleys and um, I've also gotten to the place where I've learned to embrace my process. Uh, some of part of that process is not easy uh, but it ultimately builds capacity in me, it builds um, a stronger me that then is then able to handle whatever comes in the future. So just learning to live in that moment and making the best of that moment is about that dot and then another dot. And then ultimately when you look back, then you see all the dots connecting together to be able to adapt to the life that you have today. Like that's so deep. I'm just like, I need a, a manual to manage my life that way. I'm a, I'm a detail oriented person and okay. I can get lost in it. In the detail. In the detail. And so mm -hmm. imagine I want a personal example of something you really wanted to achieve, or perhaps you can see the end in mind, because you said you see the end in mind. Yeah. But you know, you're working with this dot. Do you have a, a specific example you can share? Yeah, well, I can use one about work. Uh, when I used to, I was in Unilever for about six years, and then uh, Safaricom came calling. And at that particular time, Safaricom was kind of in its growth curve, um, and were looking to build capacity in their commercial uh, organization. And at that time, I was also doing well in Unilever. I was in the talent uh, team, so my path was kind of defined. And therefore, I sat back and I asked myself, uh, did I want to make the transition and move into, into Safaricom? Because I didn't understand anything about telecoms and everything. Um, but I mean, when I got the peace in my spirit, um, and kind of my sign, I then moved. Now, obviously, going there, it was a whole new world, right? It was very different selling telecoms and selling airtime from selling uh, OMO. And therefore, I, 
I kind of immersed myself, first of all, trying to learn the technical and all that stuff. Then I realized, actually, at the end of the day, the same customer who buys Omo is the same customer who buys Safari Airtime. Yeah. And that kind of freed me. And I realized that I could be able to use the same marketing skills that I had and, and sales skills to actually just talk to the same customer and begin to engage them on our various products and services. Um, so if I had chosen at that particular moment to look at the enormity of the transition, I could not have moved, right? So I kind of sought to break it down into smaller pieces that I could be able to consume. And then I said, now that I, once I understood this, how then do I make the best of this? And I think that is what then marked my career. Every place that I was sent, I did, have, I did various roles, a bit, about four or five different roles, which were all very different from each other. But I sought for each different role that I had to just make the very best of it. Even when I didn't know, uh, I remember there was a time I was moved to go and set up our fixed uh, internet business. I knew nothing about it, but I took that dot and made meaning of it. Um, and ultimately then, I ended up becoming director when I was 34. So did I know that I would be director when I was 34? No. Was that an ambition that I was working towards? No. But when I look at how did I get there, I can actually then add up all the different uh, points right that i was given an opportunity to be able to showcase what i could be able to do and then they all added up to me getting there so i think that's what i mean when you when i speak about just let um do the very best with every dot that is given to you and then ultimately to add up to something that is much bigger makes sense did you actually apply for the job at safaricom like see an ad somewhere and no 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 I, I was headhunted mm. yes so I was trying to understand the transition from food technology to... So I did food science. So I, when I went to, to Unilever, I thought they would take me to the factory. Um, they didn't. They cho chose to invest in me and said I had marketing competencies, I guess, because I smile a lot and I laugh a lot. Uh, so um, they then built my commercial skills. And, um, and then ultimately, that's what now led to where I am today. Really interesting, really interesting. I have so many questions for Sylvia. I don't want to overwhelm you with so much content. So I'm going to split this interview in a couple of parts. So this is part one. So this is Sylvia and where she came from. Next, I want to go to Sylvia, the mom, the mummy. How do you do it is what I want to know. Subscribe if you haven't. There's great, and I promise you, fantastic content coming right up. This is Rina and you're watching Money Bites.